So let's start with Whoopi Goldberg. I always love the fact that on The View there's Whoopi and there's Joy, because as we all know, there's no Joy without Whoopi. There's no Whoopi without Joy. Uh, you, you know, my, my feeling about The View, I once got caught in the gym on an elliptical where there was a shared television set. And the rule in this particular gym was whoever came in first uh, got to turn on the show they wanted. And some lady had turned on The View. And so I was stuck on the elliptical for a, about a half an hour watching this thing. Uh, and it, I think that's pretty much what hell is going to be like. I think that kind of I was scared straight. I then became a much better person trying to avoid that fate for all eternity. However, some people apparently watch it. And this is uh, Whoopi Goldberg said something incredibly ignorant uh, about the Holocaust on The View. Let's cut five. The Holocaust isn't about race. No. No, it's well, not about maybe race. It is. It is. Yeah. No, it's, it's, it's about a different it race. But it's it's not about race. It's not about well, race. What is it about? Because you, it's about man's inhumanity to man. That's what it's about. But it's about white supremacy. It's well, about but it's not, it's not about and, ideal and race. It's it's not perfect. But these are two Romans. white groups of people. Well, how do we have to black people see too. them as white people? But, but you're missing the point. You're yeah. missing the point. Yeah. The minute you turn it into race, it goes down this alley. Let's talk about it for what it is. It's how people treat each other. It's a problem. It doesn't matter if you're black or white, because black, white, Jews, uh, it's how everybody eats each other. The idea, I mean, it's an incredibly ignorant thing to say, but of course, if you didn't realize the people on The View were ignorant, you're probably not smart enough to own a TV. Someone should come along, you know, come away. We're going to take that away from you. <laughs> but but what what's really interesting about it is her refusal to, igno to acknowledge that race people's races are not necessarily expressed in the color of their skin. And this idea that if somebody is white, he is somehow part of one single race, which is just just ridiculous. Uh, she later apologized. This is cut six. I said something that I feel a responsibility for not leaving unexamined because my words upset so many people, which was never my intention. I said that the Holocaust wasn't about race. And it was instead about man's inhumanity to man. But it is indeed about race because Hitler and the Nazis considered Jews to be an inferior race. Now, words matter and mine are no exception. I regret my comments, as I said, and I stand corrected. I also stand with the Jewish people as they know and y'all know, because I've always done that. Now, she was then suspended for two weeks. There were some rumors that she was angry and thinking of quitting, but I don't know if that's true. Uh, and a lot of conservatives are angry about the double standard because our own uh, Gina Carano was fired from The Mandalorian by Disney. Uh, ostensibly, she was fired for saying something about the Holocaust that was actually likely true. She said the Jews were dehumanized before they were attacked. That in other words, the populace had to be turned against them before the government could act and in, in, to exterminate them. Uh, and that was true. And what she said was she made the comparison uh, with people being demonized, I think, for not getting the vaccine, which is obviously comparing uh, great things to small. And it's, uh, you know, it, it may not be the, the most apt comparison, but she was not really fired for that. She was fired for being conservative. She was fired for not being woke. She was fired for other things that she has said. And they just used this because they knew that any time you start screaming about the Holocaust, a lot of people go blind. They just so upset about it uh, that they basically don't even think through what was being said. So a lot of people are saying that it was unfair uh, for her to be suspended when Whoopi Goldberg, for Whoopi Goldberg to be suspended when Gina Carano was fired. But, but I don't think, I obviously don't think Gina Carano should have been fired. I think that was absurd. And I don't think Whoopi Goldberg should have been suspended. And I'm going to talk about that more. But first I want to talk about what Whoopi Goldberg said, because I think it actually does, is revelatory about, uh, about the left and about the philosophy, this philosophy that has permeated our culture. And it, it's such a sick philosophy. It's such an awful philosophy that I can only hope that it's going to go away soon. There is one other big difference between uh, Whoopi and Gina, by the way. If uh, Whoopi Goldberg does get fired, she's not coming to work here. So it sucks to be her. Uh, so let's deal with what Whoopi said, because it's really important. It, uh, the limiting race to skin color uh, this arises from the, the racism of the left. Leftism has become racism, and the left has used racism to promote its failed ideas, and it's singled out our fraught history with, with black people. And the reason it does that is because Marx used class to separate people and to turn them against each other and to, and to ho in the hopes. And, and, you know, I don't mean to blame Marx specifically. Marxists, um, Marx said, once said he didn't know what he was, but he wasn't a Marxist. Uh, 
Marxists use class to turn people against each other. And in America, class was so much more fluid than it was in Europe that class doesn't really work because people in lower classes in America are frequently thinking, hey, you know, if I pull off this idea, you know, I'll get into the upper classes. So they don't have the same kind of hostility. Um, So they used race and they could use race because of our fraught history with slavery and Jim Crow and, and, and black people, which was not all of America, but it was a lot of America who did exist in law and it was something that the state promoted and it was genuinely shameful and unfair. So because their ideas keep failing, they have to keep hitting the race nail. The, yeah, the race nail. And they've become the racist hammer. That's what's happened. Now, leftism is racism. It's screaming about whiteness, uh, which has come to mean anything they dislike because they, they have nothing else to defend their ideas with. Their ideas are failing. And so they use race all the time. And they have become racist because they have to explain their failures. And so now they've, they have to come up with a scapegoat. And it's now white people. Someone once said, in Germany, if you're a Jew, they hate you. But in Poland, if they hate you, you're a Jew. That's the way the left has become Poland for white people. If they hate you, you're a white person because they now define white as anything they don't like. Now, the idea of systemic racism, which is now what they say, you cannot be a racist yourself, but you're participating in a racist system, is based on a hatred of the West. The idea that because America, America is a British European founded culture. All our ideas, all of our founding, everything about us comes from Britain, essentially, and also from Europe. It's our role in history, in my opinion, is to universalize British and European culture. That's all the people who are coming in. A lot of people say, ah, we don't want those foreigners coming in. Yeah, bring them in. Let them see that British and European culture is the best culture. It's the same way the Romans universalized Greek culture and universalized ultimately Jewish culture through Christianity. They think it's a bad thing. People have attacked me for this. It even caused a riot at one place where I went speaking, went to speak. People have attacked me for saying that European culture was the best culture humanity has ever produced because they are racist, because all they see about the Europeans is they were white, right? They've got this idea now stuck in their head that that's the important thing about them. And I always say, well, really, the best idea wins. If if white people discovered fire, would black people live in the dark? I mean, it's ridiculous. It is a ridiculous way to judge things. You judge people on the content of their character, of course, but you judge a culture on its best productions, on its ideas. So to basically to this idea of racism has now become essentially a hatred, a hatred of American society and of the West, and which means they're hating the best ideas. They're hating the ideas that triumph. They're hating the ideas that gave us science, that gave us uh, women's equality, that gave us the idea of equality at all, the idea of individualism, all the things. Those don't come from African culture. They don't come from Chinese culture. They come from European culture by way of Greece and Rome. And so these are the, you start to hate, when you're a racist, you start to hate the things that give you everything you have, that, that, you know, actually make the world wonderful for you. You start to hate them because they come from white people and they have to make up stories about, oh, it was really a black person who invented whatever uh, they want to say a black person invented. No, no, it wasn't. If you stopped, if you really hate white people, my suggestion is stop using anything invented by a white male for an hour. See how your life goes, all right? Now, beyond the sheer ignorant racist stupidity of reducing all race questions to questions of skin color, when there are all kinds of different people in the world and all mixtures of the world and not all, uh, and remember, Africans, for instance, Africa is a continent. There are different races of black people in Africa. Now, let's talk about the Jews, because this is really important. Jews are different from everybody else, okay? And I'll show you what I mean. Throughout the Middle Ages, the Jews were persecuted for their religion. They were considered the infidels, right? And I've said this before, that even when, uh, that, you know, when they went off on the Crusades to take Jerusalem back from the infidel Muslims, they said, well, wait a minute, before we go kill the infidel Muslims, let's go kill the Jews who are, who are infidels living in our own countries. And frequently the Crusades would start out with a good old fashioned pogrom before they set out for Outremer or Outremer, uh, where they would fight the Muslims. But e- even when Jews converted, even when Jews converted, they still were suspect because often they converted under coercion and sometimes by at the tip of a sword. So why trust their conversion? And so there was some kind of race hatred in there. But basically, basically, uh, the Jews were hated for their religion in the Middle Ages. If you read The Merchant of Venice, where, which has the evil Jew Shylock in it, he's despised because he doesn't have the Christian quality of mercy, right? His daughter also Jewish, but becomes a Christian, and she's one of the heroes of the play. And one of the characters in the play says to Shylock about his daughter, he says, there's more difference between your blood and her blood than there is between 
red wine and white wine. So it's not the blood, he's saying. It's actually the content of her character and the, her religion, basically. And Shiloh, basically the play, people always try to sell you on the idea that uh, The Merchant of Venice is not an anti-Jewish play. It's not an anti Race, it's not a racist play, but it is an anti-Jewish play. It's a play that says Christianity is better than Judaism. Now, religions are ideas. There's nothing wrong with arguing with religion. It's killing people <laughs> for religion. It's not, you know, I, I disagree with Islam. Islam disagrees with me. That's fine. We can have a beer together and discuss it or discuss something entirely different if we want, don't want to discuss that. It's only when you start killing people that all that goes wrong. However, however, the hatred of the Jews became a central fact of European Christian culture, right? John Paul, the Pope, apologized for it, uh, and he's a saint, so he must know what he's talking about. But the everywhere, the Jews were seen as the evildoers. They were at Easter plays. They would have a, an Easter play showing Christ's crucifixion. There was always a character who's the evil Jew who would come in and, you know, kill, kill Jesus. This was because of a theology that's called replacement theology. It's the idea that Jews were God's chosen people, but because they rejected Christ, because they killed Christ, this is the idea, they lost their chosen status and their chosen status went to who? Whoever's talking, who's ever hating the Jews. It went to the Christians. Now the Christians are the chosen people and the Jews. God just kind of forgot about that promise he made to the Jews. He's not going to do that anymore. Now I've talked before and at length, and you can read my m memoir, uh, The Great Good Thing, which has a uh, entire chapter about this. I've talked about why this is theological nonsense. Uh, it's an attempt to blame Jews for the universal, for universal sinfulness and for the universal act of killing Christ. It's when you think of the killing of Christ as a, something that humans did to God, that humans do to truth, and they do it all the time. They do it, they don't do, just do it to Jesus. They do it whenever uh, that, anything approaching that level of truth appears. Then you understand why they had to become anti-Semitic. They had to sort of invent this idea. It wasn't us who killed Christ. It was those, those Jews, those Jews. But the Jews were also the people who brought Christ into the world, whose history culminated in Jesus Christ, his history up to that point, I guess I'll say, culminated in Jesus Christ. And basically, God, what God did was he used the Jews to introduce himself back into the world, and then he universalized Jewish religion. And only human beings, only human beings could take that gift, that gift of the Jews, and turn it into Jew hatred. Only, only human, you got to really be twisted by original sin. Where you say, thank you, God, for becoming universal. And boy, now I hate the Jews who made you universal in the, uh, in the first place. Jews are special. If you don't believe in God, if you don't believe in the theology I'm talking about, Jews are special in Western culture because the God we worship is the Jewish God. The God that Jesus incarnates is the Jewish God. And guess what? If you are an atheist and you are anything like a Westerner, the God you don't believe in is the Jewish God. The God you are rejecting is the Jewish God. It's a wonderful, if you've never read the novel Catch-22, it's a wonderful novel and it's hilarious. And at one point, a woman is saying she's an atheist and somebody insults God and says how awful God is and she starts to cry and he says, why are you crying? You're an atheist. And the woman says, yes, but the God I don't believe in is a good God, a just God, a merciful God. He's not the mean, <laughs> stupid God you make him out to be. In other words, she doesn't believe in the God of the Jews. There's no way of getting around this. There's no way of getting around the fact that we are a country founded on Jewish ideas of a Jewish God. Love him, hate him, believe in him or not, he is your God. And that is why I always say, if you hate the Jews, if you're an anti-Semite, you hate God. You hate your God. And if you hate your God, it's probably because you're not so happy about yourself. Now, just as the good of Christ, the forgiveness and the freedom and the equality and the respect for women, all the things I was talking about before, this, as it permeates our values, so this historical error of Christianity was so universal in Europe, this replacement theology, it doesn't just go away. It doesn't disappear. It shaped a lot of what we were. were. And when Hitler sought to make the Aryan race the master race. He wasn't a Christian. He, he, they say he was a pagan. I don't know what he was exactly. Uh, he was a demon, right? When Hitler, But when Hitler did this, he was in some ways in, in, secularizing this Christian idea. He was saying, he was doing the exact same thing the Christians had done. He was saying, making the Jews a scapegoat because he was saying the Aryan race, the wonderful German race, who are tall and blonde, not like me, not like me, Hitler, but like, you know, all the other Germans, they're tall and blonde and handsome and perfect and beautiful. 
we are the chosen people and therefore the Jews have to be destroyed. And he was, he, it was an innovation in a way. He stopped persecuting them for their religion and he started persecuting them for their race. And they had these incredibly complicated laws called the Nuremberg Laws. I mean, about what you were, if you had one uh, Jewish grandparent, uh, you were mixed race, but if you had more, you were Jew. And, you know, but the point is, the point is you could be a Christian like me and they would kill you. Right. And they would kill you. That's racism. That's Whoopi's ignorance. All right. That is so. So she apologized for it. It's fine with me. I believe in apologies. I believe in letting people off the hook. But what we, she was saying was ignorant. But it's more than that. Right. This is how the left got to this place because they universalized the Holocaust. And the Holocaust is not man's inhumanity to man. It is not racism. It's not hatred. It is hating the Jews. It is an attack on the God of the West. That is what Hitler was. Why the reason Hitler is such a central figure in Western history is he destroyed the culture of Europe, which was built on the culture of Christ. And he was as close as you're going to get to an antichrist until the real thing comes along. When you universalize, when you universalize the Holocaust, when you say it was about hate, it was about man's inhumanity to man, you are erasing, you are erasing its central motivation. Hitler's central motivation was a war against the Jews. And you listen now, the Anti-Defamation League has now redefined racism. It's really what we need is words to be redefined because we don't want them to have the meaning that they have. And they now say re racism is the marginalization and or oppression of people of color based on a socially constructed racial hierarchy that privileges white people. So it's what we want it to be. So this is the way this get, you get there, right? Hitler's war on the, on the Jews wasn't a war on the Jews. It was universal hatred. So anyone who hates is literally Hitler, is literally Hitler, right? Any, because he was just hateful. He wasn't a Jew hater. He was just hateful. Man's inhumanity to man. Anyone who hates is universally, is, is literally Hitler. And anyone who disagrees with me is hateful because I'm a black person, right? Or I'm whatever it is, whatever, I'm a woman or I'm a gay person, whatever it is. He's literally Hitler because I'm a minority. Therefore, he's instantiating the hatred that was Hitler. And therefore, I am the Jews. The Jews only used to be the Jews. We are back, right back with uh, replacement theology. The Jews used to be the Jews, but now the blacks are the Jews. Now the gays are the Jews. Now women are the Jews. I am the chosen people. They used to be the chosen people. So everyone I dislike is literally Hitler, except for literally Hitler. And every minority is the Jews, except literally the Jews. Good work, Whoopi Goldberg. Subscribe and like if you want more content like this. And if you want even more, subscribe to my podcast wherever you get your podcasts.